Yeah, and that's one from England. BKFF is in the US. So BKFF in England is the 22nd knockdown of the world, which is crazy. How long? 20 seconds. We're hoping it still is because some guys are going to lay down and still make it to like 15 or 16. <laughs> lay down, they get up, and they get back up in the rated moment, and they're like, wow, this is cool. They're like, this guy got yeah. no brain damage, and he's going back in there. Plus, that makes it weird against the Wilder fight. Yeah. The first one where Wilder, the last round, knocks him down, and it's like the ninth second. It was like, he's in his And then he goes about the wins the round afterwards. Yeah. Like, it was a black off Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I saw that knockdown. I don't think I don't think he got hurt too too much. Like I think he got caught. He and did. he kind of sat there and was he like, did. okay, it looked, it looked worse than it probably was. Yeah. Like the way he hit the ground, and then he got back up and it was like full. Yeah. Sort of big guy that he got so far. Yeah, yeah. Was. Well it looked it looked awesome, but like I I, I saw him sitting there and he was like he's lying there, he's blinking. I was just thinking to myself, I think he's thinking fuck. Oh, I need to knock the fuck up again. Yeah, yeah. I gotta yeah. actually go. Uh, Alright, have you seen Jerry Maguire when uh, the movie, mm -hmm. the, the wide receiver gets knocked out of the game yeah, and then he comes over and, yeah, are you okay, are you okay? Just wait a second. Yeah, yeah. Just wait a second. Yeah. This is such a good moment, just wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> Distance, right? So it's a movement between frontale, the 
fossa longa. And fossa longa, I want to make sure I'm covering the face, right? Mostly my chin, keeping the chin down. So if I'm here, I want to make sure that my right hand is protected down the center line. So if I'm with my opponent and I throw a strike, I get the left hand, which is a good buffer, especially here. If I try to get down the line, that right hand is there to protect me, right? Same thing if I want to transition into grappling from here, I'm striking. I want to shoot, I want to be able to have that there as well. So it's not a complete close guard like you would see in boxing per se, but there are going to be some times where we're going to have to close our guard with our striking. All right, so with our punches, especially our jab, the same way we usually strike, we step out with our jab, right? And so you can have your, your hand positioned vertically or horizontally, but um, with the vertical system, I find this kind of punch is a lot quicker, a lot less telegraphed. And it's very similar to what you see when we were doing before. You're just stepping through and striking. My right hand can either be close towards my temple and my jawline, or it can be in front of the face, depending on where I'm on screen. Right? Typically, I want to keep it one hand up, protecting the side of my head, and the other hand striking. As I step, they're kind of in unison, so step and stroke, step and stroke. So if you just practice that a bit, step around, step, strike, then you know. Make sure you always teach breathing as you're striking. It's very important to, to uh, teach that breathing out as you strike, in as you recoil. Because the more you end up striking, the more you can use your wind. Make sure they're striking with a closed fist and then back to an open fist if you can, or your back and your waiting hard. Right? Strike, in, in. So just play around with the two. One of them coming up out of the face and then go to the forehead. One coming to the side. You see what kind of things feel. As long as one hand is protecting, one hand is striking. Obviously from here you can also change the elevation of the punch. So one punch can come high, one punch can come low. You can even twist over. So if I have my partner here, one can come high, one can come low. Difference in elevation. Obviously make sure when I'm coming low, my hand is protected. Okay. You can spread out a little bit more. Here, right. we have a forearm and arm protecting rather than a glove. If I come up 
half the hand, you know, especially up against the head, is very effective. Okay? So you want to try to get into that motion of, of coming up tight with those punches and grabbing as much as possible. Right? So if we put it together with the jab cross, one, two, one, two. just like we're wrestling and striking, but not leaning in, especially with the punch, right? Because if you want to continue the combination, then off balance. All right, so that's basically our jab cross. We all know it. We know how to do it, right? Put it together. Our blocking, very similar. You can block from outside range, okay? If I'm here and my opponent wants to strike, I can use Posa Longa, right? Create that outside throw strike, strike, strike. From outside range, I'm okay. As soon as I start striking, all of a sudden I have to close my guard. I have to be a little bit more tight in my guard because now I'm in close range. I can hit them, but they can hit me. So now the offense becomes a little bit more direct. So what, what I want to do is kind of almost put my elbows towards those punches. Okay? Just move with it. You can't. You don't have the luxury of this closed guard. You can't close this guard because I cannot see. I don't have gloves on. So I gotta be able to hold my forehead. Right? Use that elbow, twist as much as you can. Right? That's basically how we're gonna try to frame our, uh, our understanding of the punches against those elbows. Use those elbows and that forearm to help you try to deter your opponent from striking towards your head. Okay? So those are our jack cross. One, two. Our left hook is our number three. All right, so basically the left hook, it's a little bit of a departure from what we did before. It's increasing and then twist. All right, so it's an increase and both the side move. Step, both the side move. All right, so one, two, one, two. But I don't, look, I don't necessarily have to turn my right foot as well. I can keep it on my toe and twist, but it's that left foot that has to twist the hips. So step, twist. The hook is very important to really use that rotation of the hips with the hook. Because as much as it comes from the hand and the arm, it comes from the ground up. Right? Just like wrestling, just like anything, we build our framework from the ground, we utilize it, we pull it through our body and all the way to the Right? So with the arms, my hands are here, my arms are going to rotate over. Right. I like to hold my my um, my hooks like a coffee cup. I like drink coffee. Some people turn it over completely, so that your first two knuckles are focused, so that's almost inverted. All right. So you don't. I don't necessarily like this one where it's completely straight. If you're gonna twist it over, it's completely twisted over. But these ones here, I like for long range hooks. Short range hooks, I like these tight, quick hooks, just like I'm holding a coffee cup because I'm close. Wow. So what you gotta do is make sure your elbow is high. It's gonna be almost vertical, parallel to the ground, but a little bit higher than my hand. So hand low, elbow high. Hand low, point high. And twist. So you step, twist. Step, twist. The same thing with the right hand. I wanna make sure I protect, because you're in close range. So I'm throwing the hook, chances are my opponent's gonna be throwing. Same thing with elbows, same thing with anything close range. I want to be able to think that if I'm throwing this, there's a good chance my opponent's going to do the same thing. Never think that you're going to be the only one throwing a combination. Because as 
much as tempo exists in fencing, it also exists in striking as well. You do have tempo, in the middle of a combination you have tempo, as soon as you lose that tempo, you have to start defending. But your opponent can steal your tempo by throwing a strike while you're striking. So you want to be able to continue that tempo by being protected. Alright? So here we step, twist. Step, twist. Switch my stance, it's the same thing, right? Switch my stance, right jab, left cross, right hook. Is there any difference at all between the left lead, left lead that we care about? No. Nope. It's just that it's, it's going to feel weird, okay. right? So the more you practice it, the better, especially in, in a full spectrum of, of striking where it's not just, for example, cross boxing, mm -hmm. when you have kicks and knees and elbows and throws. You've got to be able to use both sides because you never know where you're going to land or what position. Are, are more people, uh, like there's a division game, so right? Yeah. South, South Claw and South Claw. Or the Dots. Are more people working off from South Claw? Or is there a mix? Yes. Of course they do. Are there? It's just like the amount of right-handed people or left-handed. Okay. Right. Okay. Same thing with, with, with baseball. Well, hockey's a bit different. You start to get right-handed people or left-handed. But um, you're gonna get so you're gonna get people that favor orthodox uh -huh. over self palm, sure. but you've got to be able to know how to strike with both. Right. Because especially in uh, Eastern style, there's a lot of switching, a lot of switching of your stance to be able to set up the combinations. So you've got to be able to know how to strike with both. Yeah. That's basically it. which is good for, for wrestling because you've got to be able to know how to shoot in both positions. Yeah. Right? You want to shoot that single leg or double leg, you've got to be able to go from the front. Alright, so that's one, two, three. One, two, three. That's our three hit combination. So if you break it down with your class, it's one, two, three. Unless you say hook on its own or cross on its own. One, two, three. So that's the three hit combination. All those characters need to be knuckles? Yeah, always the first two knuckles. The last two knuckles will break almost guaranteed over time. They're very weak. Especially against the heart, but they're not all the Absolutely. Foreheads. Foreheads are really shitty for hitting. Um, your target, whenever you're teaching, is always going to be towards the, the, the face, and then with the hook towards the chin. The chin or the temple. But if it's against a taller opponent, I'm going to aim towards the chin because I'm going to be coming in lower. I won't be having the luxury of coming in too high. It's going to be very difficult for me to go high against a taller opponent. So I want to come low and towards the chin. Obviously, because the chin is most mobile part of the, of the head. Mm -hmm. And what happens when you hit your chin, your brain shoots towards the front of your cranium, mm -hmm. and that's your, your, your reset valve. Mm -hmm. That's how people get knocked out. Because if you just feel this, mm -hmm. it's all emotion in your brain from the, the, your jaw moving around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Most well. And then towards the temple, mm -hmm. and the back of the ear. Even the most vulnerable on the, on the actual skull. Mm -hmm. Right? That's a good question. Yes. I find that a tendency to telegraph my knee flow. It happens. Yeah. Is your elbows coming up? I so like, mm -hmm. And then, yeah, so you're leaning into it, which is fine. I mean, over the course of drilling it, 
you'll start to less, you'll have a tendency to less choreograph certain movements because it'll just be from but over time to, to get that technique, you gotta kind of just make sure that elbow comes up. Not necessarily, you don't necessarily have to charge it up, right, by twisting the opposite way. This generates power, but it does tend to telegraph. But I wouldn't be too concerned about that. All the nitty gritty is off the bottom. Okay? So the next one we're gonna do is the, the rear uppercut, which um, comes off the comes off the hook. So we can put it together in a forte combination. So the rear uppercut, you step with an increasing step on its own, right? From my face or from here, I want to be able to twist. Right, use this this bending, this rotation. But what I want to stay away from is digging with the uppercut. So I want to be able to shoot right from where it is. Right. So if I'm in frontale, I want to shoot right from frontale. I don't want to drop it down. I want to shoot right from here to set it right up. Because it literally have to. This is like. Think of a grid. This is my center line. This is the knockout spot. This is the chin. I want to just pass that and back down. I don't want to shoot it straight up. I don't want to dig too low. I want just enough with that uppercut. Pop it and back down. I want to be able to use my knees to propel that uppercut straight up. So in my forehead combination, it's jab, cross, left hook, right up. One, two, three, four. Is that four point to be just basically like a D, D push? Or? Yeah, push yeah. Or? So it's a, it's a twist. Okay. Alright? And using the hips. Okay. Shoot four. And this hip rotation you'll see it as you start punching, as you start throwing kicks, as you start kneeing, it all comes from the hips. Right? The more this hip rotation is flexing that hip forward, the more it's going to propel your motion through fluid. So, one, two, three, four. Okay, very good. So let's get some ties on now. So let's partner up. Partner. Oh, we were trying I can partner up with somebody too. Four, eight, well. You got a, you got a, okay. You want to draw one of them? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So we're going to partner up with our point with a partner first, and then we'll switch paths, right? Make 
sure I want to test their distance. Not necessarily that I want to strike them, but move them back. Because a lot of people will encroach, especially with that cross and stay here. But I want to kind of push them back. And I want to I want to encourage them to use frontality, step back as well. So if I throw my cross, move to the fence long up, right? Move the post along up, strike, and use long to come back. If you want to step back, you see. So that's my that's that's my one. And now this is my cross on its own. And now the one, two. Jab here, cross here. Okay. Pretty straightforward. Okay. okay. My left hook, I want to simulate my center line. All right, put it towards my center line, and it gives my hold my part of the perfect geometry to pull that left hook. Good. So if you're throwing it, sorry, if you're throwing the left hook alone, then the person is going to increase and then do that's the right. You want to stay outside of range. Yeah. So if I'm here, I want to be stuck at hook. I don't want to already be in range. Right. Unless they're in the middle of a combination. Yeah, those are my three strikes. All right, when I put it together, so my left hook, if I want them to throw left hook, I leave my left hand. If I want them to throw rear left, right hook, I my right hand. So they know if I hold the left paddle, it's a left hand. If I hold the right paddle, it's a right hand. Unless you want to have a specific drill, like Sean's, where you want to focus in on just one pad for two strikes, then you have to verbally cue that in. So left hand is left jab, oh, yeah. cross, left hook, that's one, two, three. So if I go like this, one, two, three, that's a one, two, three combination, no problem. If I want to make it, for example, um, cross, hook, cross hook, cross hook, just cross hook. I can cue that in, keep it going. Once I want to switch the combination, I can just explain it. Or you can break it down step by step by step. Once they get the actual idea of the, the idea of the combination, you can keep rotating it. Try to change the combination too much. Try to keep the combination sim simple and repetitive. And then after, if you want to switch it up. But to constantly switch the combination up constantly, it's not, it's counterproductive for them, especially. Okay? So then the rear hook, all right, rear hook is here. It's a right hand. So I want, oh, sorry, upper cut. I want to keep it to, I want to simulate my jawline, but I don't want to keep it too close to my face, obviously. I want them to make, make them reach for that upper cut. Right, because I'm not going to be in close range of the day, I'm going to be in outside range. I want to really simulate from front poly coming with that upper cut. So you want to simulate that jawline with my right pad. So that's here. But just a little bit more of a little bit more of a hip rotation. Almost like I like to think of like a golf swing kind of thing. Okay? So I'll put it together with a forehead combination. Sorry, jab, cross, left hook, right off the cut. Okay? So just practice that with your partners for now. Okay? Break it down. One, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. So start with the jab for a bit, then move on to the jab cross, the jab cross, left hook. And the jab cross, left hook, right up. So, two jabs, throw up, then the jab cross, then the jab cross. Good. Oh, uh, and I'm going to be match feet all the way. Match feet. So, if I switch my stance, if I want them to switch, oh, I switch. Okay, so the layer of zero point is going to start. Yeah, I can do it. I feel like the first thing I'm going to do is to say, okay, switch. Yeah, your job. Yeah, yeah, then they'll go better. Thank you. 
So again, but make sure you, when you switch the stats, you cue them in, because they might not patch that right off the bat. I'm going to try it out. We'll work together with them for a second. We'll go full. Okay. Okay. 
so the, the main purpose of this session here is to get it on the table, get everything on the table. So we're probably not going to grind out as much as you'd like. No. That's going to be for us to do after. Right? Yes, I think Toronto is going to have a class where we're going to grind through this, well, probably way more than one. We're going to grind through this a bunch of times, have a look at the video. But um, just saying, don't, don't, uh, if yeah. you feel like there's a lot of material on the table, that's for a reason. No. Sorry, a question uh, to two of you. What's the ultimate goal of the end? Is that you're going to have people sparring in class, the fists, or you just want people more knowledgeable for sword work, or? It's a great question. So the, the end goal is to have no distinction in our curriculum between wrestling and striking in our opera desire. Yes, sir. Right now there's a distinction. We don't want that distinction to exist because in pure way, as we understand it, I think it doesn't exist. We want, when we're doing our bazaar, we're doing both of these things, wrestling and striking, both together, both understood the same. And whenever we're doing our bazaar, whether it's in fencing or free play or anything like that, both of these things are on the back. Yes, sir. Got it. Okay, okay so that's probably as much time as I want to use on the striking of the, the, the punching tip. Alright, the next thing I want to jump into is our front kicks. Right, so, front kicks are very much like you would see in the manuscript. Obviously, we're not striking anybody in the groin. No. So, we're going to focus in on. <laughs> yeah, we're not going to get that crazy. Not today. We're going to wear some big iron cups. And stuff. Yeah. Um, so, what, the focus of my, my, my front kick is to um, change my opponent's structure, to impede their structure. Obviously, I can strike to hurt them, but most of the time, it's to change their structure. Whether I'm holding a sword, I want to break that, that bind or break them down to be able to have an amputated strike. Uh, or I thought I'm wrestling, I want to strike. Either way, I want to be able to strike with the heel. Okay? So I want to strike towards the lower stomach with my heel. Step, step towards the stomach and back or with the back foot towards the stomach. The higher I strike with my foot, the more it will change the structure. But towards the lower stomach, it's quick, it's fast, and that'll hurt more than striking towards the chest. Because your muscles in the chest muscles, and it'll push you back, but striking towards the lower stomach, uh, very similar to the yeah. Sorry, question. Because you're shooting the strike with the heel. Yeah. We don't want any strike with the ball to put it either. It could. Just try Depends on my distance. I can use the ball yeah. with the push, yeah. but I want to be able to strike with the heel. Just sort of push through the target versus just. I want to really hurt them. I love the I want to try to hurt them. I don't want to just push them away to score points or I want to try to do maximum damage. Yeah. Yeah. So this is very much like a pancreation, like the gastritin type of uh, strike towards the lower stomach, where it's really describing that heel. Obviously it's not always gonna land, so it'll kind of come towards the, the ball foot sometimes, right? But I want to try to focus in on that heel so I can on strike me for this demonstration. But that's my focus. So the footwork. With the lead uh, kick, is increase with the back foot, lift the foot, and strike and down. So you're gonna do gathering step, lift, strike, and back to my steps. One, two, three. All right. And with the hands, okay. What I want to do is I want to have one hand protecting, and one hand screen. So if my my lead leg is kicking, my left arm is going to swing to counterbalance my weight. That's the only purpose of the swinging of the hand. It doesn't have to be a huge swing, but it has to help counterbalance the weight. Yes. So one hand has got to be up protecting, and one hand counterbalances as I kick. Step, kick, and down. So I don't want to try not to snap the kick. I want to drive it forward, almost like towards like the upper part of their groin. Just above the stomach, towards the groin. Yeah, the hip is okay too, but for the purpose of hitting the pads, it's going to be a little bit higher. All right. So same thing with the rear. All right. Just like you're kicking down a door, you're going to increase your step, bring up the leg, and kick forward. All right. You have a little bit of a lean back, but not too much of a lean back. All right. My right foot is kicking, so my right arm is swinging. Swing, and I want to keep my left hand up towards my temple. Step. Kick. If I land forward, I land forward. But essentially, I want to try to kick and return back to my original position. If you kick and you land forward, then you just got to be prepared to do what you can from this close distance. I just switch stats. Okay? 
So that's the kit. I can't go into too much detail. We're gonna to try to wrap it out with our pads. The pad hold, I want to try to create a shelf with my left hand, and my right hand is gonna twist over. So I create the shelf for which I can brace the right hand, and I create this target. So the top pad is the target. Okay? Yes, nice and hard. Good, try to push me right back. Good. Alright, so whether it's left or right, it doesn't really matter. So this can be left. Right? Or I can just tell my opponent, because the right hand is gonna have a little bit more structure, a little bit more power. I can switch my stance, or I can just keep my partner. Lead, lead kick, lead front kick. Good. Rear front, rear kick. Good. Drive up the raise roll. If I want to be an asshole, I can push into it. Kick. 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 It's okay. But protect it. I want to push into it a bit. Really give them that, that leverage to really try to drive it. Okay, so this is my shelf. My hand inverts and twists over, all right? It creates a flat structure. You wanna simulate your body. Okay, this is not simulating your body. And this is not good because you're gonna get, you know, this will drive right into your stomach. Keep it all where it's trying to sink down. And just try to really, if they're a little bit shorter, you're gonna have to sink down a bit, right? Give them that, that perfect spot and just let them drive home. Good. Try it out with your partner. Obviously, if you have belly pads, this works really well to me. Yeah. We have a belly pad. Yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> so we want to try to try to put it on top. Yes. Yes, that's good. We do. We'll be fine. Especially if you push into it. If you want, to, if you want, to, if you want to, for example, set it up where I want to drive you back.
especially with the weight of the shoes. This one is a bit uh, young, I'm not really sure I have a proper shot for this. This one here. Oh, there you go. You guys want water? Uh, so, so, a medium going to the hot water? Uh, I brought, thank you. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> the problem when you step back and forth, and then I'm like extending my shotgun, and then I feel like you just want to get the body on the scales first, they're not going to let it go with the lights. And I go, here's the thing, I'm going to step back, 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 I'm going to step
rotation of your thing. So if you just kind of move over and twist, go through that rotation, all that increase. Okay? So obviously we're not always going to be standing on the perfect terrain or with the, you know, all the best, like the more grip you have in your shoe, the more it will impede that motion. So what we want to do is create a cheat step. All right, so the cheat step, if I'm with my phone and we're both standing forward, I want to traverse offline, right? Off center, offline traverse this direction. So this is my center line on this line, this line here. Offline, traversing step. And what this does is creates that runway for my leg. That's a perfect thing. So if I'm stepping here, a bit of a traversing step, I come towards the ball of my foot, and I can push off and kick. Right, just like that motion here, now my footwork is going to change, and I'm going to cut that angle. Just like a sopani cut. The same direction as a sopani. I don't have to get too fancy with it, as long as it comes up and strikes that floating grip. Okay? So with the pass. You'll see some people when they're holding pads, they tend to hold the pads like this. Right? Um, it's really awkward, it doesn't help you because what happens is it ends up shooting the pads towards your face. So you want to create a triangle with the pads. Right? If the leg's not going to get through this gap, we're going to create this triangle. So the two tips of the pads are going to like that to create this kind of A. So what I want to do is I want to stand from this guard here, we're both in the left leg forward. I want to keep the roll top. Or measure height to here. Create that angle. I want to make sure I create that geometry. So from here, I'm facing forward. We're both moving the left way forward. Both left way forward. Right? I'm here. With, I'm the one straight. So I'm the one holding. Right? I have to make sure I switch my stance. Not fully, where I'm all of a sudden pointing towards the wall. Just on an angle. And I want to. I want to anticipate that kick, with, and I'm going to push into it. Right? Don't let it drive you up. So with that A, I want to push into the kick. So if you come straight up towards the pads, I'm going to simulate my body. If I'm parallel to the floor, this doesn't simulate your body. You want to get bring it close towards the body, to let your opponent feel like they're actually striking you and towards your body. Okay? So from here, just over, and you have that A. Right? If it's tight together, you don't have as much structure behind it. You want to make sure that you have enough structure, especially against someone who kick, 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 potentially a lot harder than your body weight. Yes, sir. Right? When you have a big kick, yeah, you need a lot of strength behind it. Right? You try to put your face towards the pad, keep it nice upright, and push into the kick. And this is fine. You can push as much as you want into that kick because it'll just give them the incentive to strike harder. Right? So with your partner, Switch, so I'm standing here, switch, and kick. Make sure you keep that A, elbows in nice and tight, hold. The tighter I keep my elbows, the more I simulate the body. Right? Hard. Straight up, straight up. Good. All right, just like that. Uh, sir? Yes. Uh, sorry, go ahead. One and then two. So, when you're sitting there and you're sparring, yeah. right, and you're Am I going to switch every time when he kicks and then we come back to this position yes. and then we switch again? Yeah. Okay. So if I, if I want you to throw a jab, so you throw a jab here, yes, sir. Step, right? So I go jab, and then kick, then you go to the kick. Yes, sir. But I have to make sure I'm there. If I'm, if I'm just here, right, and I just turn over, I'm yeah. too close. And you're off balance. I'm off balance. If I want to go right from here for my stance, it's going to make you squeeze your stance. Yes, so we'll get into that. So just a regular, yes. So when I was doing this just now, yeah, I'm trained to kick. Okay. So I was at a range where when I completed the kick, yeah. part of my, the, the top of my foot was hitting the pad. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Well, as long as it, like, you want to be able to focus your attention on the heel. If it does hit part of your, because the thing is, it's a wide spectrum. Yeah, it's very wide. So it'll still make contact with the pad. But as long as the heel, as long as, sorry, as long as the shin is focused towards the front of the pack, right? That this is not my primary strike. Right. Like okay. If, okay. If you feel okay. right there, right. like if I show you right. the difference between that, like this is, okay. you don't, you, you don't, you don't hear it. Yeah. And you can feel the shin. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like you don't, you won't, you won't hear that slap. Right. But this is all shin. Yeah. And you feel it here. Yep. As opposed to that slapping sound. Yeah, 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 yeah. It doesn't necessarily mean that it's 
a hard strike. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? Because literally that's just a push. If you hold the pads, right? This way. This is just a stop with the foot. And this is with the heel. With the shin. Sorry, with the yeah. shin here. I don't like it's in the up. Do you feel it right here? Yeah. <laughs> you don't even hear it. You'll feel it though, right? So it's not necessarily like, oh, I don't hear that big slap. It's not a hard slap. Not necessarily the case. Right? Because all that comes out slap is from the foot. Anyways, yeah, let's try it out. I'm going to focus on paddling, so more than actual. So that's like four. So you start out left leg forward, yeah. and then you switch to one. Yes, sir. Here, we want here. Yes. 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 Okay. So it's almost like my knee is almost in the top. Yeah. 
Okay. Like, right on, right there. Yeah. The door is closed. Oh, yeah. 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 I want to change the direction, but I think I can straighten it. But it's that big pot is going to take most of the way. So, Side leg, it's right. a front leg. Yeah, kick towards the, the pad. Okay. 
that, that simulates the leg. So kick right through. I want to kind of go with it. Right? Good. Inside. Again, nice and hard. That's basically it. So I'm just going to kind of show you. Inside. Yeah. Inside. You got to step with it too, right? Step. Good. And the pie just goes with it. Yes, sir. Okay? You don't want to stay there too long because what happens is you might get that foot right here. Yeah, yeah. I might get foot yeah. Right. You want to come to the other side? I want to go with it. Right? This one you want to go with it because you're, you're going to you're gonna hit this thing in your elbow if you stay there too long. That's basically, I want to go too far to detail with that. The next one are the knees. Okay, so the knees we're going to do from all, starting from outside range. All right, so what I want to do with the knee, Obviously, the knee is not straight up, unless of course I have my, my opponent's head down and I can knee straight up. I want to knee towards the body. So to, work, to, to, to knee towards the body, I have to create a spear with my knee. So I want to create that spear, that point, by bringing that heel up towards my backside, the heel up towards, and then shooting it forward. So to shoot it forward, you have to come towards the ball of the foot, and you have to you have to flex your hips towards the partner. This is probably the most complex motion of the feet and the whole the whole art. The shortest tool. Exactly. Yeah. The shortest tool. Yeah. And this is the one that people struggle with the most. This is the knee from the outside because you're striking a vertical structure of the opponent. They're not horizontal, so you can't just strike straight up. You have to strike towards the body. From the other side. Okay? This is the way you're going to increase, come out towards the ball of your foot, and then you're going to flex forward. Where your hips shoot the hip forward. So, the best way to help do that is to use the arms. The arms are going to almost like, I like to think of it as either two ways of like grabbing your opponent's head and twisting it, or twisting like the wheel of a big truck. Twisting. Twisting that, that wheel. So what it does is this elbow comes across and this arm elbow comes down. Like I'm twisting the wheel of the truck. And this will also protect you too. So if my opponent is throwing a punch, I can also parry. Right? That's that motion there. If I bring it straight, if I leave it here, it's going to counterbalance my weight. So I want to bring it with me. It's almost like I'm stepping in. <laughs> Especially because they're bringing the momentum forward, as opposed to a static opponent where I have to step forward and I really have to use my momentum to drive it forward. If my opponent's already coming forward, it's a very good counteroffensive technique. And you don't even have to move that much because you're literally just throwing your knee out there and stepping your foot. Okay, so off the knee, sort of off the step, coming up on the foot. Flexing the hips, twisting the body, and shooting that knee forward, and coming back. All right, so let's try this knee. Back, back, twist, back, step, twist, back, twist. If you land forward, there's no problem. You just gotta be able to you get from there, that's clinching range. This is wrestling range. So if I come here and I step, I knee, I better be able to grab it. So just make sure, if I want to stay on the outside, throw that knee to strike, and come back, I have my range. If I knee and step forward, I'm going to make sure I go to the from there. Okay, so that's the rear right knee. From the rear. Straight forward. That's a basic knee. That's from a long range, or from a medium range. Long range would be a kick, medium range is the knee. Close range are different knees. But if I switch my stance, I can now all of a sudden I can do my back. Same way. This is going to feel very awkward. It even is very awkward for me as well. It's the left knee. So you can, uh, you can pass this step to the left knee, or you can quick step forward, step eight. Distance from my 
want it to step in and meet. Well, I want to create, that's what I want right here. I can, I can push two pads together, like some people like to push two pads together to really brace it, right? Very similar to our, to our push kick, but it's not going to be completely flat. I want to create a little bit more of an angle. And really, that's a good knee. So I want to really push into it. Very nice, Sandy. Very nice. Good. Two, three, four. Is that good? Good. That's it. Good. And if I push more, it'll really help my harder to get back to the original stance. Okay? So that's basically, if I want to create, if I want to create distance from the outside, they have to step. They can, use, they, can, they can grab my arm, twist it down, and use that leverage. Right, so if I come here, but I have to be very wary, because I only have one hand on here. So I really have to push into it. So I create this distance, you would throw me. I'm going to push into it. Yeah, I'm going to really, you see how I push into it? I'm going to really push into that knee, because that will be tired for protect yourself. Yeah, exactly. Right? You want to protect yourself with the pads. You don't want to be that big kid that has a black eye after all the pads when it happens, right? Yeah. So, or two, I mean, sorry, is yeah. that you're simulating a defense. Yes. If that was to actually yeah. happen, you would have Right, right. So. Yeah, so what you're doing is you're anticipating their attack. At first, you're kind of just going through the motion, okay, this is how I hold this pad, this is how I hold it. Actually, once you start to know the mechanics of it, you're just anticipating their attack, and you're helping them. You're helping them kind of formulate that proper structure. So if you see that they're not doing it properly, even for um, your recruits to say, okay, you know what, sorry, switch your stance. But obviously you don't want your recruits to be like, well, you're doing it wrong. You're not stepping, you're not this, you're not that. Obviously that's our job, right? But for the recruits, if it's the wrong stance, you want to encourage them to make sure that they're in the right forward, the right frame. So if I'm here, all of a sudden you're like, okay, sorry, just switch your stance. And then you're good. That's as far as you want them to go. Right? But you'll see that, like especially this knee, it's, this is like the begin like everybody's striking pretty pretty well. This is a pretty hard strike when it's done properly. Once you get to that motion where it's from the outside and you step in and get that, that full rotation, you've got to know all these pads. Right? Especially with that knee. This is from the outside range. You can really strike hard. Okay? So let's try it out with our partners. Right? Stepping out and throwing that knee. Sweat just thinking about what I'm happening. Yes. Now, if you want to try to get that, that's not You don't have to sign it full away, but the second that it's there. Thank 
sounds a little hot, it's a stick. So yeah. there's a difference between the yeah. and the yeah. S. <laughs> contact. 
so bad. My foot doesn't feel it, all right? Because if I release here, then I'm going to do something else. Right? Yeah. I'm going to feel it. I want to keep tight. I have to drop the hips back and then thrust. I want to be able to use this momentum and use the leverage of the grapple to be able to pull them forward. If I loosen up, it can work, but it's not as effective. And what essentially they can do, if I drop back and that twists me as I'm coming up, I want to be able to have a strong structure as I drop the leg back to throw the knee. And vice versa. If I'm going to do that one to the left knee, I switch. I switch the left knee back and straight up. Pulling towards. I want to be able to kind of torque through the knee towards the solar plexus if I can. Right, right towards the ribs. Straight down the wall. Okay, right towards the center. Those guys look like they're doing some battle where they're You know what those guys are, right? Uh, Super they're, they're, they're wrestling. They're, they're wrestling? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like Super you know, you know, you know, Yeah, yeah. Super Yeah, yeah. Super Yeah, yeah. Super Yeah, yeah. Super Super Yeah, yeah. 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 Super Yeah, I want to just push down into it. Yeah, hard. Okay, yeah. hard. Two pads, sir? Oh, uh, one pack. One pack. So, two grips for pins. Let's carry. I definitely can't close my eyes. No. You can see it, right? I can see it, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I want to see that anticipated. Obviously, when you're doing with the class, I'm going to start off slowly. Yeah. Once they get the hang of it, yeah. trust me, it's not as bad as it looks. Mm. Okay? Yeah, so like it's nice to get that. Grab me, right? No, I have nice and tight. Can I see that knee? I'm good. You, you don't want the pad. Yes. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It's just when you don't have the pad that I would just be. Oh, yeah. for sure. I'm not scared. You definitely yeah. want some kind of protection there. Well, so I'm doing it in my car right now. <laughs> so let's try it out with our partner. Um, right, when you hold the right pad, try to, uh, try to encourage them to throw the right knee. When you switch the left pad, encourage them to switch. Question yes. about that. Yeah. Is there a significance to why? Right. It's just so it's a to keep them in. To keep, but, but that's to maintain the process of the whole pad drills. Right. So that's always right and left. Right and left. Yeah. Yes, sir. So that you're, if you're constantly just holding right, 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 then they'll, they'll not know the distinction between using opposite knees. Right. So five years ago for later on. Exactly. 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 Yes, so if you're grabbing right, you almost over here, then you see the left. You switch right, switch. drop that left back. Right. My full right. Or left. Left. Right. And then you can right. totally manipulate me. Move me the way you want to be. You want me to move, you can twist, and me. Just really beat up that pad of order, moving them around. Right? Yes, sir. Okay, let's try it out with your partner. And glasses on when you want to get out. Okay, first. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Left, you have to 
switch back. Are you going to yeah, you're going to really drop it back. Is it going to be Yes. Really drop it back. Like this, the one tie side knees, I'm not really crazy. Yeah. Really, the only ones I like are the inside ones. Oh, yeah. Inside <laughs> ones. Oh, yeah. Inside ones. <laughs> like to the body here, they're really just the side ones. <laughs>
always been taught with elbow, you aim through the eyes. Oh, yeah. Because um, it's very hard to, to find a perfect target with the elbow, with, as, like, as opposed to a punch. You want to be able to over the top, cross the eyes, and you want to be able to cut. Uh, when strikes, you cut the eye, the eye falls out, the fight is over. No problem. Right, so aim for the eyes. Yeah, yeah. 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 but if the fight is over, you won. It's like, I'm sorry, you know, shit happened. Man, I'm a boss. Right through. Right, so if we're here, we're both in. I'm a boss. From the outside, it's just a straight <coughs> strike in here. The elbow comes up. This is a mid sound all day. So, what I want to do is, I'm going to blade the hand, or if you want to bludgeon it, bludgeoning it is, is better to come over top. Mm. Over top. <coughs> right down. This one here is a good cut from the middle, over top the guard. All right, so this is the fender at the elbow. Right, just follows the same, same block work here, over top. Mezzano, comes across, okay. Soltano comes underneath, on an angle, same thing. All right, and then the reverso. This, is, this one's really effective because it's really close. Mm. So what it does is tucks underneath. Yeah. Comes across down. Mezzano, right across. This one is a good one to hit towards the jawline. Mm -hmm. Right? So the tunnel comes up. Oh, I won't hit you. Yeah. Right up. You really want to focus it on shooting that horse to the top. And then Puta comes straight through. Right through the middle line. So right through the center line here, I'm here, right through the middle. And you could create a point with your elbow, or you could just literally drive that horse to straight forward. I've seen people just the forearm before. And what's really good about this one here is if you have someone that's really big and they're throwing hard strikes, you can have a really good tight and just shoot forward right through their guard, right through that center line. Because a lot of punches come around that center line, especially when you're, when you're throwing hard punches, they all tend to become like hooks. But this is the one strike that comes right through the center line. Right through. Okay, just like the spear. All right, so when I'm holding pads, so this is the, I'm going to create an angle. Oh, angle. Okay, so that's our, that's our friend ending. Oh, right now. Like you close my face. I don't have to keep it far out because I'm not worried. I can see it, right? My tunnel, I'm going to straight across. Okay. So tunnel, create an angle. It's almost like the uppercut, but I'm not holding it straight. I'm holding it a bit of on an angle, so that with the elbows, it's not exactly the same as when we're holding punches. You're creating a bit of an angle, and it's all work, right? So if I show you this one, you know it's middle. Right. If I show you this that one, work? yes. Yeah, because you're yeah. trying to cross. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. That makes sense. Right. If I'm holding here, yeah, yeah. And I hold it tight. And I'm kind of showing the pad, like it's not completely um, perpendicular to the ground, it's a little bit towards my points because I really want to focus on the point of that elbow. Mm -hmm. That elbow is really pointing it towards that target. Right? Close to the end of the face, mate. Yes, so right. right. Yeah. Exactly. You want to perfectly simulate the body parts involved in where you want that strike. Um, so you have the overhand, right? This is your elbow. You know that's coming straight down. Mezzano. 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 Good, right? And so, with this one here, obviously you're gonna to have to verbally cue it in because it's gonna look like a punch, mm -hmm. right? So when we're getting close range, the difference between the punches, the punches obviously are very apparent. You can see that this is a jab, you can see this is a cross, but I say overhand oh, now, then I have to cue you in. Um, it's that level, right? Because this is good. obviously a lot of people, don't mistake it, don't throw a hook, which is fine, but then you're like, okay, you're too close, so now elbow, Blah, right? Without elbow. Side. Yeah, up, 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 good, up. All right, so let's try it. Let's try it on the left. Oh, sorry, on the right first, overhand mezzano. Sorry, uh, pendente, mezzano, sotano, then reverse it. Okay, so what you can try to do too, pad holder is just keep your pad, in, keep your pad out for now, but um, strikers, make sure you really maintain that front palate, right? Because you don't want to, you don't want to come in, it's kind of full guard right here. You want to be able to simulate this here. Because this is where you want to be able to kind of fall over top that guard as a strike. Come over top. Okay. Yeah. Try it out. And then the last one, sorry, the last one is Punta. Punta is literally just a 
on the whole pad, straight down the middle. You just drive it straight the whole Yeah. So you can do, yeah, you can do lead foot, or you can do, the, yeah, it's mostly lead foot. It's very weird crossing it. If you cross it, it literally has to be just the forearm driving forward. It's very hard to really twist it in. It's disconnected. You just want to drive that forearm. But literally, you want to drive that forearm right down the line. Okay, just keep a nice tight base. Yes. Yep. Good.
switch my stance. Obviously, I can bring it real deep, that an uppercut, to really focus it on. But if I'm comfortable, a lot of people are not comfortable with it. Here, I'm still safe, because my, my face is nowhere near that. This is actually the worst thing yeah. I'm driving to the towards my okay. face. So this is actually a lot more safe. And it really focuses on your, your partner extending that uppercut, rather than keeping it super tight. And I like those really extended uppercuts. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Especially because we're, we're in a long guard. Those are our strengths. So switch 
fact, obviously, whenever I switch, I want to cue my partner into a switching, but also we're already in the weird status, right? So we're going to From here, I want to signal my kick. Step back, I flash my pads, that's my kick. Right? That's my switch kick. I can do single kicks, I can come to double it up, so double it up, two. I can do triple. Straight up here, this, this signals the switch of stance, whether they want to switch by stepping forward or they can kick right from there, which is a little more advanced. Kick straight from there. Um, I'd like to really emphasize the switch at first because I like to just kick from here, but it's a lot more advanced. You don't get the same rotation, it comes into like a lot more practice. So you don't want to develop bad habits by not having to switch. So whether it's a traversing step or Yes. And you're trying to promote the fact that they always kick with the rear leg like then? Yes, so it's a front leg kick. Yeah, front leg kick, it's good for both for a yeah, long kick. But if you're gonna if you're gonna like show them the kick from here, it's a lot more difficult because there's still mechanics involved. You stop the step and kick. And um, it's just not gonna work the same way when you switch kick. Yes, sir. It can be done, but once people get the hang of, of the, that motion, then what happens is they have to get that rotation. Um, for the front kicks, right? From here, I can say, okay, rear kick. Front kick. Oh, oh goes my kick. That's okay. My pad was there, so I didn't get kicked in the face, right? Okay, those are my kicks. From here, uh, if I, I want to flash my knee, right? I can flash my knee like this. Sorry, like that. One on top of the other. I'm nice and, I'm nice and safe this way. I want to switch it, I can kind of switch it just to cue it in, right, to show the other side. That's a little bit of a visual indicator to switch the pads. All right, if I want to have, really focus it on having that pad outwards, right, switch your stance, switch, switch, knee, oh. right, so that I can have my pad out there to really focus it on it. If I have my right pad, I can say, well, switch, 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 right, switch. Good. Those are my knees. Okay. From there, I have my close range knee. When we're coming in, we're grappling. My corner grabs. Boom. Good. And they can even push off. At any point, they can push off. I can even, I can even encourage them to push off. Push off. Push off into a kick. Right. Something creative like that. From here we have our elbows, okay? Overhand, right? overhand. That's out. So final. Reverse it, yeah. That's out. Good. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of go through it and try to make a little bit of combinations. Alright? So I can do it like this, right? One, so it's a jab, cross. Left hook. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thank you. you. Thank you. That's a that's a one two three kick combination. That's one combination for a kick, right? You do push kick. Kick. That's a front kick kick combination, basic kick combination. I can have a knee. Boom. Elbow. It's a basic knee elbow combination. Okay. So I want you to try to go with your partner now. Try to mix up the combination. Based on what we did, you just kind of have a bit of fun with it, play around with it. Even if it's just one thing at a time, even if it's just like walk through and go with jab, kick, knee, elbow. Even if it's just sure. you know verbal cue cue them in, yeah. just kind of get them going through the combination. Even if it doesn't have to be quick or fast, it just gives your partner the time to kind of set up for the next strike. Okay? Yes, strike out. Yeah, I love the uh, 
official, yeah, but I think, uh, base, I think it's a good base to experience striking a uh, desire. Good framework. Yeah. Good lesson. Thank you. Awesome. All right. Uh, first of all, thank you for coming. Number one, thank you especially Anthony for giving up the camera this gift, right? Because uh, it's now going to take you a bit far into the future. Mm -hmm. uh, I hope. Um, uh, yeah. This is this is an, this is an awesome tool that Emma now has. And also, this for me, this is an example of one of our core activities at Emma. We're ever renewing ourselves, right? Paradoxically, because we're studying a book that was written hundreds and hundreds of years ago. But uh, never, it's, it's always a good time to, to think again about what we're doing. And even though we're almost 25 years in, here we are learning a new strategy system that we're going to um, commit ourselves to and, and uh, make our reality for who knows how long, right? Half a decade, right? Three, four, five decades to come, who knows, right? Um, so, uh, so thank you again. To very sincerely for this gift. We're going to put it to good use and um, safe trip home, everybody. Yeah. Okay? All right. Thank you so much, guys. Thanks, everybody. Great class, guys. Great, great class. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well done. Well, nice. well, well, I'm going to put it to good use. I want everybody mask with you as well. Everybody said, what the fuck is this place? Special, special man. Rolls in the ring. 